Hello and welcome. I am taking on a viewership challenge. Several people have been asking me to try an endless endurance race in dry review. So there we go. I'm in dry review, won't be leaving it. I'll share some of my tips and how I adapted to this and um, settings. I'm using tilt B controls with sensitivity on two and all of my assists are off. You need those assists off for endless endurance racing. Man, this is fast. Now I had to do a little bit of training, but not too much. I didn't want to spoil some of the fun, so this is my third attempt. This is in the exclusive series, tier number two. So this is a good paying race, and let's be honest, if you know this race, you know I'm picking one of the easier endless endurance races. But wait a second, am I? Look how fast I'm going. This car is basically a street legal Formula One car. So the action is coming at me very fast. Very little time to react if things go wrong. So, you know, it might have been better if I chose, like, the Audi R8 LMS Ultra at Porsche Short Track. However, I didn't want to do that because when you're going up the hill after the start finish line, it can be really hard to see. So, there's reasons why I didn't do that. Anyhow, this will get interesting. It's, the track feels so different when you're using this viewpoint. Like, oh, right there, Cop's Corner easy full throttle in this car and I just blew it I started my turn too early and I mean that's just this section here I have a lot of trouble with right here Beckett's complex and then there's chapel curve so and yes please subscribe hit the bell like the video in fact uh, I try to be really interactive if you leave a comment uh, if you've got questions I'll try to answer I don't know everything but I'll I, I tend to answer I tend to try to be really active so um, that's Veil, I'm cutting Veil. And then take the big cut after the bridge um, and get back on the track at Luffield. So this isn't too hard. Avoid that car, slowing down quite a lot, probably more than I need. Oh, but it's still lost a bit. And then this is Luffield. And if you get this right, you can stay full throttle on this car. Okay. So let's give that cop's corner another try. It's really interesting. Everything feels more narrow. There, that was fabulous. I noticed that maggots, this is maggots right here. This feels fine to me, but Beckett's complex, this section, this is usually where I'm braking. And look at that, it's lost the rear end, totally lost the rear end. Obviously was getting too late on the brakes. In this car, I only brake for Beckett's complex and I'm full throttle before Chapel Curve check out the specs like this is crazy and there's the full upgrade costs it's a crazy car and then for stow you know and i'll get into some of my breaking point references as well everything feels smaller so i would say okay let's let's get into one of the big problems with driver review a lot of people have harassed me through the years saying oh you're not doing real racing because you're not doing driver review and pardon me for being a little bit snide but Let's get realistic, guys. I'm playing on a big phone, iPhone 13 Pro Max. My screen is 6.33 inches wide. In metric, that's 16 centimeters. Well, how wide do you think the windshield of a Valkyrie is? Well, it's more than six inches. It's more than 16 inches. It's more than 36 inches. I actually don't know what it is. The average windshield is 59 inches wide or about 150 centimeters. So. That's a massive problem. Like, I, this really isn't doable unless you're on like a bigger tablet of sorts. I'm not saying it's not possible, but what I found is I can't see what's happening. And this is the main thing. That's why it's very, you don't actually don't see videos of people using driver view very often. Oh, I lost it, it failed? Oh my. And it, a lot of it is visibility. You just can't see very well. Like I'm straining to see through this windshield because that's what my just just look at what you, just take a look at what you're looking at right here. What's your you what's your usable visuals right now? Like it's my screen is down to maybe a quarter of the the width, like the uh, the up and down the vertical. I've got about a quarter of the vertical and I've got a good two thirds of the horizontal. But still, like this is just like in chase view. I'm actually further back from the action, but it's easier because I can see more. Also, I'm a little bit higher. So, that is a massive problem. So please, do not talk to me about how real or unreal this is because it is not real to be driving a car 
that can go over 400 kilometers an hour on a 6.33 inch screen, right? You wouldn't do that in real life. That's called suicide. <laughs> so anyway, so how did I do this? Well, I've done this track a lot in Chase View. So what I had to do was go back and try to rely on my muscle memory and try to get a feel for just trusting myself in the corners, which is scary. So I realized that in real life racing, man, these guys spend a lot of time studying the tracks and their braking points, their acceleration points. Wow, that guy just came whipping around. And then there's ghosts. So there's a lot of studying the track, studying your markers. So here, I'm going over to the far left and I'm, I'm watching my mark on the right, just as it's kind of passing the windshield wiper, I'm into my turn already. This one I'm really doing by feel. You're gonna see me blow it at Beckett's Complex quite a lot. I start over braking a bit. Wow, that was actually really good. Huh, now, there's something sticking straight up there. You see that? That is what I'm watching as I'm heading into this point here. And then, oh, that's just beautiful. And then getting all squirrely. Ah, uh, never mind this breaking point, because that's totally shot. Uh, this next one coming up, I found this very difficult. I'm watching the sand on my left. And I'm getting a ways into it until I'm on the brakes and getting a really good time. Oh, that was beautiful uh, for my acceleration point. Here, it's shortly after the curve ends on the right. Try not to slide around. You really don't want to slide around when you're off track. That's what's going to hurt you. And you got to be aware of the bots vanishing. Now, very quickly, I think, if I was doing chase, you would already be into the perpetual point. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, in an endurance race, you have to pass 42 cars. And then once you reach the 43rd car, there'll be a bunch more in front of it, and the race can just go on as long as you want it to. It isn't possible at every single track, nor is it possible in every single car. Silverstone Bridge Circuit is possible in many, many, many cars. It's one of the easier tracks. Um, same with Porsche Short Track. But then other places like Mount Panorama, I've never seen anyone doing a legit endless endurance race. Hey, look at this. Perpetual point, look, all the cars suddenly really tightly grouped. You know, when an endurance race, cars get further and further and further apart until suddenly you don't see anymore. This is what happens after that. Ooh, I actually think this is a hidden Easter egg because it's 42 every single time. So pretty cool thing. Um, you do this on like bonus R days or bonus fame days with the agent and manager hired, and my goodness, you can rack up the currency. Uh, today, I'm gonna be going 100 kilometers. We're not gonna watch that full thing. We're gonna fast forward. Ooh, I did it again. Call the cops, I crashed a cop's corner. Oh gosh, guys, it's embarrassing. I don't think you've ever seen me do that in uh, Chase View. Like, how is that even possible? Oh, and then I blow it at Chapel Curve. Oh, I got egg on my face. This gets so embarrassing. Anyway. Oh, well, it's just part of the fun, right? Okay, if I do this clean. Okay, the wall on the left. That's what I'm kind of... Well, it's more so the curve before the wall. Oftentimes, there's an overhead banner as you approach Vale. I often use that as a braking point, but not in a car like this that has such incredible braking abilities. As a rule, you want to be back to the throttle at the apex of the corner, which is the center point of the corner. So if you can't get back to the throttle that early, you were braking too late, and you need to back up your braking point. Now it gets a little bit tricky rejoining traffic, because the ghosts. You got to make sure you're not going to be plowing into a ghost. Okay, so full timer, right? Okay, let's warp ahead here. That's a successful entrance into cops. We're gonna warp ahead here, not too far, but we went a little bit. Okay, maggots, Beckett's complex, and beautiful. Oh, I tagged him. You know you're taking it really well when you catch up to bots. These bots are faster than a fully upgraded car. You can tell that because they'll pull away from me on the straight sections. They're horrible on the corners, and of course they don't take cuts. Oh, you see that outside pass? Holy smokes, that was amazing. So you can see I'm, I'm having to trust myself. Oh, I cracked my windshield. That means I definitely have at least stage one damage, maybe stage two. Huh, that's a pretty heavy crack, so that was a pretty heavy hit. We'll see, we'll see if it gets cra get cracked more later. There's only two stages of damage. 
Um, what that means is I just lost top speed, acceleration, grip, and brakes. Everything gets reduced. And sometimes you don't feel it as much in some cars compared to other cars. I always feel it in the grip because I'm regularly pushing a car to its braking point because that's what you do if you want speed. It's all about how fast can you take the corners. It's not about the straights. Your speed down a straight is dependent on your exit of the last corner. The exit of the last corner is dependent on the entry. And we're warping ahead again. A few more laps and still I can catch up, right? So if you fall back, as long as you don't have too many mistakes back to back at the Silverstone Bridge circuit, you can keep it going. But gosh, guys, it's not easy. And so here, watch. Oh no, he'll, I'll gain on him. Oh, did I hit him? Oh, more cracks, more cracks. This is now maximum damage, that's for sure. Okay, oh, watch out for ghosts. Oh my goodness. Is that scaring you guys? I mean, I'm driving and it scares me. Let's warp again, another lap ahead. So I've got maximum damage pretty early in the race and I'm still, I'm still filling my timer. So that's pretty good. Now, can I catch up to guys going through this section now for the S's? Oh my goodness, look at that. Am I gonna catch the draft? Or, no, there is no draft here. That's right, this is a little bit older. So just as that line's getting to this, my side pillar, I'm getting on those brakes. Whoa! I was not expecting that. Very quick recovery. The second you're crashing, you must be thinking recovery. The second you start to crash, immediately think about recovery. What are you gonna do? How's the car gonna act? Have you crashed enough to even know that? So what's gonna happen? So based on way, the way it was going, I knew I was gonna be spinning around, so I'm on the brakes, backing up, trying to get the car spun around and get pointed in the right direction as fast as possible so I can recatch the bots. Oh, I passed one off track. That's weird, he was a ways back from the group, wasn't he? And I'm gonna be in trouble here. I think it's 28 seconds at the line, if I'm correct, let's see. Okay, so here, this is interesting. This is lap 17 of both races. So this is my older version of this race where I did it in Chase View. And watch how fast I take it through Beckett's Complex here. It's amazing, beautiful. I'll have a link to the race at the bottom at the end. We're gonna compare the earnings of these two races. But I, I thought, let's do lap 17 of both races. Notice the difference in distance. That's because I was going off track a little bit more in my driver view, obviously, because you don't log distance when you're off track. You don't earn fame or R dollars when you're off track or M dollars if you're in a motorsports race. Oop, lost it there. So I thought it'd be interesting to see this, comparing these, these visuals. And you can see at a little point there, I made a mistake and I was ahead in one view, then ahead in another. We're gonna compare how the actual time of each race, because I did the exact same distance in this race going um, chase view. Okay, we're gonna pull out of that and then we're gonna warp ahead a little bit more. Going through Cop's Corner, nice and clean. We're coming up to the end of this. Uh, what I do is I call the race at the 100 kilometer mark. So from green light to 100 kilometers is the race. Then I'm gonna spin around and come back to the 100 kilometer mark so we can get the exact earnings. But if, I, if you guys want to extrapolate my numbers, meaning if you want to say, okay, well, that's great, but what if I want to go 300 kilometers? No problem. Multiply what I got by three, and you'll get close to that. Of course, it varies by your ability. Earnings per minute are based on ability, right? So if you're driving better than me, you're going to earn more. If you're driving worse than me, you're going to earn less, which you will see when we get to the end. Oh, boy. Because we'll compare my chase view to my driver view and see which race was faster and how does that affect earnings. Also, something I'm going to do different is in the chase view version of this race, I cut out the friends bonus. I'm going to add it back in because it's a massive amount, actually. It represents a really large amount of the earnings. You really want to get a friends bonus. If you don't have Facebook or you have one and don't want to use it for the game, just create another one. Go to the trackside group, find some friends, increase your earnings. I'm winding down the clock a bit here. If you're doing a long race like this, always hire the agent and the manager. I didn't, so we could get some base math. By the way, watch this. Two cars that were behind me. Isn't that funny? I was already ahead of the spawning point. All right, actual race time, 23 minutes, 48 seconds. So I was earning 900 fame per minute, 8,774 R per minute. 
chase race view time of 22.29, there then I was earning 953 frame per minute, 9,413 R per minute, definitely more. Thanks for joining me guys.